Today, brothers and sisters, we hear from the gospel and how we're called to bear fruit and bearing fruit in hearing God's word. And this is my second mass here. I'm, I'm originally from Ottawa, Ohio, just about 20 miles north of Lima. And, you know, God's word is the, the very reason why I became a priest hearing God's word and spreading God's word into the world. And, you know, at the last parish I was at was John the Baptist, St. John the Baptist Parish. And I'm reminded in how John was a voice. John was a voice that called out in the wilderness. But that voice only lasted so long. Your voice, my voice, you know, we only have so many years here on this earth, and soon our voice will go away. But we hear Jesus is the Word, the eternal Word. It's not a something, but a somebody. Jesus is the eternal Word. And how God's Word never never will die. The earth will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. And how the voice has its time, but the word is everlasting. I know that's, that's somewhat hard for us to believe that God's word is eternal, but it is. And Jesus is the embodiment of that word. And how many words we hear in the world. And God's word does change us over time, but we have to be receptive to it. We have to hunger after it. We have to want to draw close to it. You know, Jesus is a perfect gentleman. Jesus is that perfect gentleman. He'll never make you do anything you don't want to do. If you don't want to spend time in his word, he won't make you take, spend time in his word. You know, it, but it, it's, it's important that we know his word. There was a time there for a while, many people thought, well, Catholics don't have to study the Bible. But Catholics don't have to study the Bible. And, you know, I don't believe that. It's very important for us to know scripture not just our interpretation of Scripture, but what did the writer mean? We have biblical, we call them biblical commentaries. They're called biblical commentaries. They help us understand God's Word and what He's trying to tell us. Many times your own Bible, in italicized words at the bottom of the Bible, that, that's kind of a commentary. It's telling you what the author meant. And so it, it's worth, it's not just reading scripture, but reading that bottom italicized. What, what's God trying to tell us here? And that's, that's why it's so important, you know, as followers of Christ, as Catholics, that we not only pray, but we, we try to gain knowledge. We try to gain knowledge too. Because knowledge, you know, it's just not knowledge. You know, I'm sure there's many, there's many theologians who teach at Catholic colleges that have knowledge. Prayer is important. That's that, that, that soul, that soul of the person. Prayer nourishes our soul. And prayer comes first, but it's knowledge of our faith it's knowledge of Scripture that helps our prayer life, that nurtures our prayer life. And so that knowledge and a want for prayer, both, how that's to be brought together. You know, and I, I often think Jesus spoke in parables. He says, why do you, the disciples asked him, why do you speak in parables? Why do you, why do, you do that? Are you trying to play games with people? Jesus, are you trying to play games with people? Is this a hide-and-seek thing that you're trying to do here, Jesus? 
What, what are you trying to, why do you do that? You know, part of it is he wants people to pay attention. He, he wanted people to pay attention to what he was saying and to think about what he was saying. And that's why he often, he spoke in parables. He would speak plainly, as we heard at the end of the gospel today, he explained that, that some people, they just aren't ready to hear God's word. They just aren't ready. Their rocky ground, the lure of riches, the fear of being oppressed by entering into God's word. And I can tell you, I can tell you as a Catholic priest, I have many, I have many experiences where I purposely am called away from God's word because of administration, because of office work, you know, and how diligent I have to be at times to enter, to stay into God's word. You know, and that's just not for priests and nuns, everybody. Well, Father, you're supposed to, you're supposed to enter in God's word and then teach us. Well, no, if you're baptized, and most of you in this church are baptized, I'm sure, that even that little baby kid over there, that we're called to enter into God's Word and teach that Word, to go into the whole world, not just ordained or professed people. All people are, if we're Christians. So that means that we take the time to do that. And I got a great advertisement for you today. Today and today only. Attention Kmart shoppers. You ever remember that? Attention Kmart shoppers. If you look up and look around, you'll see that the blue light is flashing. Yes, Kmart shoppers, today and today only. I've got a great thing for you. The Bible in a year. The Bible in a year. Father Michael Schmitz, go to ascensionpress.org. Go to ascensionpress.org and hit the tab, Bible in a year. And I can tell you, you're going to learn a lot. And some of you, I know some of you travel. Some of you who, who've come to church today, I know, it, I know you have spent at least 20 minutes driving here. I know you have. You have time in your car. If you live in Dayton, you have time in your car. Okay? And the Bible in a year. And it, through, it'll take you a whole year It takes 15 minutes every time you listen to it. 15 minutes. But it's worth it. You not only hear the Old Testament, the book of Numbers, the Judges, you understand these people in the Old Testament, the book of Maccabees. You understand that and how it's related to the New Testament and the Gospels. Please, please do it. I beg you. Enter into Bible in a year. And you'll start understanding who Jesus is and where he came from. You'll start understanding our older brothers and sisters, the Hebrew people. You'll understand who they are, and you'll understand Christ more thoroughly.